happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, then your face should really show it. Smile for the camera. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. Woo! How did you like my rule that told you how to express your happiness? Wow, you're already there. What if the state of North Carolina mandated that you could only express your happiness one or two ways, either by clapping or either by smiling? And if you didn't comply, you would get a nice letter in the mail that states you and your loved ones would have to leave the state and relocate to another location in this great America of ours because you did not fit into the North Carolina way of expressing happiness. Now, how does that make you feel? I'm sure some of you are drawing concern, as you should. I mean, this is a country built on freedom of speech, right? And embracing our unique self. This could lead to a protest. So let me change that. Let me remove the rule, and this time, when I say, if you're happy and you know it, I want you to do your thing, whether that's shouting, singing, turning around, whatever it is. Are you ready? Yeah. Here we go. If you're happy and you know it, do your thing. <laughs> oh, I feel it! <laughs> so, I have a question. Raise your hand if we express happiness differently? We did. So here's another question. Did we accomplish the goal of expressing happiness? Yes, we did. So too is the same philosophy in our educational system. We all agree that all students can learn. Am I correct? But we can also appreciate there are unique learning styles. So is this the case for students with Asperger's. You see, students with Asperger's, they are brilliant. They enjoy learning. But this is a concern. Dr. Elizabeth Keefe interviewed 127 special educators, and she asked them, after your licensure, how prepared did you feel in instructing those with autism? 77% said, I feel unprepared. Let's go to the classroom. In Educational Weekly, less than one in five teachers feel very prepared in instructing those with autism. So too is the call for this presentation. We all understand relationships are needed in order to achieve academic success and that requires getting to know our students as to their needs. So I'm here tonight just to give an appetizer, not the whole meal. I like to give you just enough that you will leave hungry that you will seek out more. So I will inform you about Asperger's and then follow with some of the challenges that they face that impact their achievement in class and then I will share the solution. Y'all ready to be introduced to Asperger's? Well, let me respect the culture. Let me not introduce, let me let them introduce themselves.
Asperger's has spoken. Are you listening? So now what is Asperger's? According to the Neurological Institute of Mental Health, it is a subcategory of autism. And autism itself is a neurological and developmental disorder. By neurological, we're referring to how the brain works and is organized concerning social interaction, concerning communication, and concerning learning and behavior. When we are referring to development, we are introduced to these symptoms at an early age by age two. I'm born with this. So then, according to the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual, which is a reference guide that we healthcare professionals use, like speech pathologists like myself, physical therapists, doctors, it levels Asperger's as ASD, Autism Spectrum Disorder, level one. And that means mild. So then what does mild mean? Mild means that I have a sprinkle of the features of autism, but yet I also have commonalities with those who do not. That is why it is so hard to tell or notice this in class until we come upon the differences. And you notice I said differences, I did not say disorder. So let's get into that. You see, when I say commonalities, persons with Asperger's, remember the happy and you know it, and I asked you, did we all achieve happiness? It may take another route, but it ends the same thing. So let's go here to listening, okay? See, say the word neurotypical. neurotypical. Those are persons without autism. So a neurotypical in social interaction, you're doing it right now. We look at each other while you're talking. We're doing that because we're reading body language. I got something to share with you. We're not listening to the words necessarily, it's how you say the words so we can get the meaning. Conversely, a person with Asperger's may or may not look at you. It might be inconsistent. Some of you will quickly say, oh, you're being rude, but that's not the case. Actually, I'm being respectful. See, I'm not, I don't, I'm not reading. It's called emotional literacy. I'm not reading your body language. I am listening to your words. So therefore, calls the need to be literal and concrete so that I can have a picture in my mind instead of being figuratively speaking. So I look away because of my sensory issues because if I look at you, all the details in your face, the modulations of your voice is distracting and I miss your point. At the end of the day, are we not both trying to listen? Yes. Let's move into communication. You know, in communication, all of us are thinking something, but we have chosen to think it rather than say it. Neurotypicals, persons with Asperger's, on the other hand, I see it, I think it, I say it. But guess what? The motive is, is information giving to help you. Example, a student comes in class, they're wearing form-fitting tight jeans cut. Well, a neurotypical might think this, well, you need to change that, go put something on, because that doesn't do anything for you. But they don't say that. Persons with Asperger's, listen to how it's said. Your jeans seem very tight. Isn't that uncomfortable? Isn't that giving you information? Isn't it supporting you? When we look at it in that perspective, Okay, let's move over to cognitive. See, a person, neurotypicals, cognitively, when we listen to the communication, we are able to pick out the relevant versus irrelevant. Main idea, undertone, what you really mean, but what you didn't say, because again, the emotional literacy. Person with Asperger's has trouble with picking out the main points. So classroom teachers, when you are telling stories, they are actually listening again back to the words, as you saw, line by line by line. And you may feel they're being intrusive, but they're asking questions. So tell me, what does that mean? I don't quite understand. That's to get information so I can do the same thing as you, as neurotypicals, and figure out the main point. So now let's go to the challenges. I'm going to bring sensory neural into that. Let's talk about the classroom. 
So you saw the quote up there said, why well, can't teachers understand when I put my head down, I am trying to listen. So in our classroom, we require students to listen to us talk. We're animated as well as take notes. Now, for some of you in our culture that are neurotypical, this is no thing because we multitask. We can shift our attention. But did you know some persons with Asperger's also have a component of attention deficit? Also have a component of auditory processing. I hear the sounds, but I have some delays in breaking down that information. So I said Asperger's are brilliant. They enjoy learning. But look at this roadblock in the front. You're asking me to listen to you talk. I'm watching the animation. I got to turn so I can't get the words. You're speaking abstractly. Now you want me to shift my, my attention to note taking. I'm not going to get it. And it's going to look like, oh, well, he has comprehension difficulties. Let's make the referral. Solution. According to Dr. Brenda Miles, who wrote, and you can look this up, Educator's Guide to Instructing Asperger. She suggests, along with her, the other co-authors, that the lecture, prime, give them an outline of what you're going to talk about. The strength of the person with Asperger's is details. Give me the details so when I'm listening, I can follow. That's called a program for us neurotypicals in Sunday church. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's also when you get products, hey, COVID gifted us with Panato on those who know Canvas, Blackboard forms. My strength is detail. I have struggled with organization. So if you give me a demonstration, a video demonstration, I can take it home. My memory is good. Don't assume I know the materials to pick up for that project on the solar system. Tell me what I need to know. Because when you're talking, let's drop down to the challenge of sensory renewal because we've been doing this for a long time. The student that walks out of the class without your permission, 50% of persons with Asperger's are undiagnosed. So the student that walks out of the class, oh, that's rude, I'm gonna send them to the principal. No, perhaps I'm walking out because I'm overstimulated. I can't process, so I give up, I'm not getting this. He's not turning in his homework. Well, how can I turn in my homework if I don't know the detail and the steps? Challenge. Solution is provide a rubric for projects. Let's go to sensory neural. I'm gonna kind of wind it up. Have I got you hungry yet? Yeah. Let's go to sensory neural. Oh, we as neurotypicals, I know we love music. So let's do a nice thing. So when my class comes in today, this is what I'll do. I'll turn on some soft music. I'll just set the atmosphere, blinds open. To a person with Asperger's who's overstimulated by what I see, what I hear, that's not calming. It creates anxiety. I'm walking into noise. It's like us being at a concert and closing a room with loud music. It's like a person with cold hands touching you on your arms and woo, we retreat. So in common with them, we have sensory neural issues too. Adjustment. Instead of turning on all three lights in the classroom, how about one row? Just enough light for everybody to see. Instead of lifting all the blinds, how about two down, one up so we can accommodate? Instead of having the TV and self-contained rooms on, turn it off. Then you might not see the meltdown. Ah! 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 You might not see that. So you say seeing is believing. Some of you may say, well, that sounds good, but how about those that are more severe? You remember relationships when you get to know the needs of your students and you adjust the environment and the environment responds? Far from the tree. Okay, let me give you a few minutes just to type that. Go to your keyboard. F. A. <laughs> When I got to know this student, 
that yes, I can by, I may not do it myself, but this is how I do it because of his own uncomfort with touching the screen. What does it matter? It's feedback. Why, we, why do we have IEPs and we're forcing our students to be a neurotypical? Why do I have to fit in? So two, I'm going to wrap this up. All these things that I have shared, let me do a disclaimer. There's a proverb that says, the greatest of these is love. And if you have not love in your heart, it will not drive. It will not desire, to drive the desire to be patient, to persevere, to have the kindness that's needed to drive this. So to my educators with love in your heart, thank you. To my Asperger's culture, out there who is tolerating all the environmental noise and need that quiet morning. We see you and yeah. we are adjusting. And here's my poem to you by Edgar. Yes. Though the road may be tough, and it always will. Though the road you're traveling may be uphill. Teachers, when the funds get low, when the debts get high, <laughs> Asperger's, when you want us, smile but you have to sigh. When the pressures of the world get you down a bit, 